Today we have 1 trillion transistors. NVIDIA's supercars are way better than we thought. NVIDIA just launched their new flagship gaming GPU, and AMD is releasing a slew of new cards. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, TSMC, the company that manufactures nearly every high-end processor on the market right now, recently shared this slide at the IEDM conference, and in it, we can actually see that it makes an almost unbelievable claim. According to the slide, TSMC expects to put 1 trillion transistors on a single package by 2030, meaning in just over 6 years, we could have a single processor with a trillion transistors. What's interesting about this is that it's only made possible by using 3D packaging. So we're talking things like chiplet technology. According to this, we would only be at 200 billion transistors by 2030 with just a monolithic die, to which that's still a huge jump from where we are now. But we already have 200 billion transistors on NVIDIA's Gracehopper Superchip, though that's more of a full platform. If we look at the MI300X, though, we're at over 150 billion transistors, so it shows the power of combining chiplets on a single package. Still, a trillion transistors is a long way to go in just a few short years. Maybe TSMC can pull it off, but it's tough to say. Delays happen all the time, and fabs do like to overestimate for investors. Still, anywhere near this is an unbelievable achievement. Next up for today, NVIDIA's next-gen supercards are way better than we thought. But before I get to that, learn how cool PC hardware like this actually works with this video sponsor. Brilliant, the ultimate online platform to learn PC hardware, or really any STEM field, because they teach you in the coolest way possible, by actually making you get in there and do it yourself with these fun puzzles that teach you the concepts and then build on them. It makes learning really complex subjects easier than ever, like learning how AI chatbots work with their new course on large language models. Want to learn how memory works? They've got you covered there as well. Ready to code? There's even courses on that. Whether you're a beginner or a professional, Brilliant has something for everyone. And if you've been debating on joining, now is the perfect time because Brilliant is offering my viewers a 30-day free trial when you visit Brilliant.org slash GamerMeld. Plus, when you sign up at Brilliant.org slash GamerMeld, you'll get 20% off the premium membership for life. This is one incredible deal. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash GamerMeld. Now back to the story, we have multiple new leaks that pretty much confirm the specs of NVIDIA's next-gen super GPUs. First, we have a new EEC filing by Gigabyte, then there's new MSI SKUs being listed at retailers along with palette cards. And they all seem to confirm that NVIDIA's super GPUs are in fact coming soon. But they also help to confirm some specs. For starters, every listing shows that the 4080 retains its 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which is of course isn't a surprise. But what is a bit of a surprise is that even the 4070 Ti Super comes with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Originally, I wasn't too sure about that because we seem to hear the same thing with the regular 4070 Super, but it looks to be the case. And this means that both the 4070 Super and 4070 4070 Ti Super is set to be a serious upgrade to their non-Super counterparts. Not only that, but the 4070 non-Ti Super mostly looks to come with 12GB of VRAM until we look at the Palette GPUs. As you can see, this retailer lists both 12 and 16GB models, so there's a chance that some models actually come with more VRAM, meaning the 4070 Super could be a massive upgrade because it would get a ton more cores, as well as more VRAM. Ultimately, NVIDIA's upcoming Super GPU are looking better and better, but as always, it's really going to boil down to price. Fingers crossed. And next up, NVIDIA officially launched it. The long-rumored new flagship, their RTX 4090D, has been released to a flaccid audience. That's right, we knew the card was coming thanks to numerous rumors leading up to the release. But because it was specifically made in response to US restrictions on China that have to do with performance, I more or less knew it had to be worse. And it is. The GPU all but replaces the 4090 in China, yet comes with 14,592 cores instead of 16,300. And it gets 456 tensor cores instead of 512. But it does come with a slightly higher base clock of 2280 megahertz instead of 2235 and has lower TDP, yet comes with the same boost clock. 
when it comes to performance, we're looking at around a 10% decrease. Like the original rumors suggested, the price will ultimately remain the same, so this really is just a sad release all around. Oh, and another thing that changes is that the 4090D doesn't look to be overclockable, as none of the third-party cards seem to have overclocks in any way. As for release, the pre-orders recently opened, with the release date rumored for late January. Let's just say I'm not exactly excited for this one. And lastly for today, AMD looks to be working on a slew of new GPUs. The first part of the story comes from a new EEC filing, where a subsidiary of ArcTech recently submitted new Radeon GPUs. Among those, we have the RX 7700 non-XT, RX 7800 non-XT, and the RX 7600 XT, meaning AMD could be gearing up to release quite a few new cards. Of course, EEC filings can sometimes be preliminary, maybe the company is thinking about releasing a card, but they never do, or the board partner anticipates a release. But here's the thing, in a new report from Benchlife, they just confirmed at least one of those GPUs. And while they claim that the other two aren't really coming, it could just be further in the future. Because according to Benchlife sources, AMD is actually planning to release their 7600 XT during the week of January 22nd. And according to video cards, a specific date mentioned was January 24th. Meaning if this is true, AMD is set to release a new GPU early next year. Moving back to the the other cards, this could be a response to NVIDIA's super GPUs. Of course, the lower end SKUs don't exactly challenge NVIDIA's super cards, but it could be a way for AMD to at least offer better price to performance. And that, as always, proves the power of competition. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's new gaming GPUs or are you more excited for Nvidia's super cards? Let me know down in the comments below. And make sure you try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day!